let me just see how close he'll let me get the snare. I don't think I can get him from here. Whenever we visit a location, I'm always on the lookout for my next potential lizard catch. Look at that. Over the years, I have captured many of these speedy reptiles from collared lizards to turnip-tailed geckos. However, on the Pacific side of Costa Rica, there is one particular lizard that has evaded me for several years, the spiny-tailed iguana. A giant amongst resident lizard species, this iguana may look slow and lumbering with its calm demeanor. However, this creature is incredibly quick when it needs to be. Catching one by hand can be difficult, so today I'm going to employ a strategy that many herpetologists use in the field to get up close with lizards. Using a bamboo pole, some paracord, and a multi-tool, I was able to build a snare that would allow me several extra feet of reach. And I'm going to loop the paracord through this notch and then tie it across the top and the snare will dangle down right from there. That snare will then go over the head of the lizard and the weight of its body, once it starts to run, will pull it taut. I'll have it on the end of the rope and hopefully we'll be able to catch it and get it up close for the cameras. Oh, there's that big one there. Let me just see how close he'll let me get the snare. I don't think I can get him from here. Put him on the side. Oh my gosh, that's a big, big lizard. A big lizard, hold on. I can grab him right back. Okay. Whoa! That is a serious dinosaur right there. Look at that creature. Wow, okay, hold on a second. Let me get the snare off of here. <laughs> what do you think, man? That was a great grab. God, it is really, really strong. It is really strong. I do not want to get bitten by this creature. Hold on a second. Let me get a good hold on his head here. I'm gonna cut the snare rope. Okay, all right, let's back up here and go down to the trail. I wanna keep the lizard as calm as possible. Let me get the noose off of him here. Okay. Oh, definitely made a go at me there. Wow. Oh, the teeth in there. You know, Mario, can you help me out? Can you grab yeah. that rope? I got a pretty good hold on him. Just, you kind of got to like gently loop it up over his head. Okay, I'm going to pull him back. There we go. Okay. There it is. That is the spiny tailed iguana. It might as well be a dinosaur. Oh, can you guys believe it? It is taking me days to capture one of these lizards. Now, let's take a real good look at this creature. Look at the spines running down the length of the body and then of course here on the tail and you can see where they get that name, spiny-tailed iguana. If you zoom in there, you can see all the spines running along the length of the tail. They are incredibly sharp. Now, they can use this as a defense against predators. They will whip this tail around almost like a stegosaur, and this is like a bunch of barbs laced underneath with muscle and bone. It is so incredibly strong. Look at the hind legs. Now, these creatures are terrestrial, but they are capable of climbing. Those claws and those strong forelimbs and back legs will allow them to easily scurry up some Something like this, a side of a cage around here when we first approached it was on top of that monkey enclosure and of course they can climb trees. Look at the stretch of that mouth though. 
oh my gosh, it's like looking into the throat of a Tyrannosaur. Now you look at a creature like this and it has these razor sharp teeth, but believe it or not, these lizards are herbivores, which means that they eat plants. Just the other day we witnessed one eating some hibiscus flowers, and you think to yourself, wow, this creature could take down pretty much anything, maybe a bird or other lizards, but nope, sure enough, they're interested in fruits and flowers. Look at the coloration of this reptile. It's like a grayish blue, all of these really rugged scales on top of the head, and it feels like sandpaper. Mark, just describe to everyone out there watching what it feels like. Oh, wow. Is yeah, that... it feels like it's about like 100 grit sandpaper. It could do some damage if yeah. it whipped you. Yeah. Well, you can understand why it was so dangerous for me to try to capture one of these by hand. And I think I could have done it if I had gotten it right behind the head. But a bite from a lizard of this size can easily send you to the hospital. Not only are the teeth sharp, but they're curved backwards. So if it bites and shakes its head, yeah, your fingers are going to get shredded. Can you imagine something like this, you know, 60 plus million years ago and maybe three or four times the size because that's what was here on the planet during the time of dinosaurs. So impressive, so unbelievably prehistoric. <laughs> this was absolutely incredible. I have been trying for days to catch one of these lizards and sure enough here, hanging out at Kids Saving the Rainforest and I managed to get the spiny-tailed iguana up close for the cameras. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Whew. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next location. All right, well this is it. The moment that we release the spiny-tailed iguana back into the environment. Gotta be really careful that I don't take a bite here. I'm gonna set it down right there. One, two, three. Whoa! -ho -ho! That was a fast lizard. If you thought catching a spiny-tailed iguana was exciting, make sure to go back and watch the time I managed to get a collared lizard up close for the cameras. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next location.